Orion Township celebrated 20 years of their big rig gig with the largest turnout ever at Friendship Park. Orion Township dignitaries broke ground on a brand new park on Baldwin Road thanks to a $25,000 grant. The Chamber of Commerce helped celebrate the official grand opening of Culver's with a ribbon cutting ceremony. And believe it or not, the high school football season is right around the corner. ONTV's Sammy Tiramina talks to some of the coaches that make up the OAA Red Division. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. Township Parks and Rec offers family-friendly events and programs all year long. Recently, the township hosted a popular event that celebrated a major milestone. On the evening of Friday, August 4th, dozens of trucks, tractors, and emergency vehicles gathered at Friendship Park for Orion Township's 20th annual Big Rig Gig. It's estimated that almost 2,400 cars came out to the free event, making it the biggest and best Big Rig Gig ever. About 21 years ago, I had a baby boy who loved trucks, <laughs> so that's I was looking for a new special event. Waterford had this event called Touch a Truck, and I'm like, yeah, let's check it out, see what it's like. I stole the idea, and 20 years later, here we are. Every year it gets a little bit bigger and a little bit better. I don't know if I'll be able to get better than a Chinook and the Oakland County Sheriff's Department helicopter. And how can you top that, Joe? <laughs> how does it get better? But every year we come up with a better idea. This year we added food trucks. It's just oh, yeah. every year businesses, they come to me, they want to come. I'm not going to turn them away. And here we are with the biggest big rig gig ever. For the 20th anniversary, Parks and Rec teamed up with the Orion Area Chamber to include 10 additional food trucks, which turned out to be a huge hit with visitors. This year, the, for the third annual Food Truck Festival, we have partnered um, with Orion Township Big Rig Gig. And it is super successful. We have 10 food trucks out here today. Every single one of them has a long line, and the people in the pavilion are just enjoying big time. So it's a great collaboration. In addition to the Big Rigs, three different helicopters landed at Friendship Park including this CH-47 Chinook out of Selfridge Air National Guard Base. Well, I mean, we're all, when we're all, when we're little kids, we want to do like cool stuff like this. So I'm happy to come out here and uh, show them that uh, there's uh, fun things to do when they grow up. Although um, when you're a pilot, you never really grow up. So. <laughs> it's like you're playing G.I. Joe, right? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> there's a lot of, a lot of paperwork and behind the scenes, but uh, it is fun to come out and do the, do the good stuff once in a while. The Lake Orion Police Department has been involved with a big rig gig since the beginning, and this year they brought with them a wide variety of vehicles. The biggest thing we're trying to do is the joy of the kids. Um, the public, sometimes I with the kids, they're scared of us. We don't want them scared of us. They, we want them to approach us about anything and everything, and this breaks that barrier and, and uh, opens up a relationship, that type of thing. Anyone venturing over to explore the Orion Township Fire Department's vehicles had a chance to meet brand new fire chief Ryan Allen. The chief was a farmer volunteer in Orion Township before moving to South Carolina and Oklahoma. He returned to Orion Township to begin his new gig on July 31st. I think it's a great event. We're seeing a lot of people out. We're able to welcome the public in, uh, other community, uh, other places. So it's been really nice. It's really nice to see the community come and rally. It's nice to see everybody be able to get out and couldn't ask for a better day to do it. Looks like you brought the whole fleet out. What did you bring out today? We did. We've got uh, ambulances out here. We brought an engine, a ladder truck, and a command vehicle so that people can see what their tax dollars are, are going to work for. Look at the families. It's all about the families. Young families with kids, older families. I mean, there's, there's some just moms and dads here. You don't have to have a kid to be here. And everybody's smiling, everybody's happy. Because what's better than a, a park full of trucks? That's why we do it. It's really about bringing families together. Orion Township Parks and Rec will continue to offer family-friendly events throughout the summer, including their outdoor community garage sale on August 19th 
and concerts at Wildwood through August 22nd. For more information, visit orionparks.com. In April of 2021, Orion Township was named a Tree City USA by the Arbor Day Foundation in honor of its commitment to urban forest management. The township continues to make preserving green space and natural beauty a high priority. On the afternoon of Monday, August 7th, Orion Township dignitaries gathered on a parcel of land located on Baldwin Road near Pasadena to break ground on the township's newest park. <laughs> Our board wanted to be deliberate about having green space. We have uh, plenty of development happening in our community. We wanted to make sure we, we had lots of green space. So we have the, the playful dragon just south of us, but this one is going to be different. This is more, uh, we want to have an area that pays tribute to the history of our area, to Ginjaville, the Ginjal family. And then also this is going to be um, some pathways, some trees, a sensory garden, um, benches, more of a reflecting area. And it might seem strange right on a really busy road, um, but this works. I mean, we, we've traveled and looked at other communities that have these types of parks and this works. So I'm super excited that we're going to be able to bring this to our to our community. The project was made possible thanks to a $25,000 grant from Canadian National Railway through their partnership with America in Bloom. Only 10 projects are selected to receive the grant each year. The township received a similar grant last year to landscape the corner of Jocelyn and Brown Road. The new park space will occupy a parcel of land that has some interesting history behind it. All this area here belonged to the Ginjo family. They, they bought it back in the 1920s and they, and they started a, a subdivision called Ginjo Mott. And then the original deeds on a lot of these houses around here are still identified as Ginjo Mott. And that was back in the late 20s and this was just a gravel road going from Pontiac to, to the pier. There's a spot in the road and they started a little gas station and a little store down here where the original Snoko was tore down right here on the corner. And uh, all this area here was a uh, peach orchard here. And, uh, and on all these houses you see on Pasadena, Elmine, and Gregory, they were all developed by the, by the family. But the house behind us here, that was uh, built by Frank and Jenny Ginjo, who's uh, Oakland County Board of uh, Commissioner Mike Ginjo's parents. Oh, wow. And that's where Mike and his family were raised. And this vacant property here, uh, Frank and Jenny would uh, farm it uh, for their uh, garden. And my grandfather, uh, Harold Van Camp, uh, when he retired, he, he, he was an old farmer. He, uh, he'd bring in the manure and put it on the ground here and then till it and disc it. And, oh, they, they grew corn like this, you know. We want to do things that remember our past. We're, we're certainly a growing community. Um, we're not looking to develop on every square inch. We want to do things like this. These are the projects that get me excited. Work will begin soon on the park with tree plantings taking place in the fall. The township is hoping to unveil the finished project in the spring of 2024. The staff at the Chamber of Commerce is busy all year long welcoming brand new business to the area. Recently, the Chamber had reason to celebrate when a local restaurant opened their second location within the borders of Orion Township. Owen TV's Joe Johnson explains. Joe Zimmer opened Culver's Restaurant on M24 in July of 2008. Some call him the ambassador of Lake Orion since the restaurant is the first thing visitors see as they cross into Orion Township from Auburn Hills. His weekly car cruises attract classic car buffs from all over Oakland County. On September 13th of 2022, Zimmer broke ground on a second location situated on a booming stretch of Brown Road just three miles away from his original location. On the morning of Wednesday, August 9th, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce, as well as staff, family, and friends, returned to the location to celebrate its official grand opening. So one, two, three, four! What possessed you to open up a second location here today? Well, everybody asked me that, and I said, because I can. And uh, I, I just thought that this area is so ripe and so being underdeveloped, but it's getting, we're, it's getting all filled up. So uh, I'm just, I just think that we're only three miles away from the other store, but I think this store is going to do very, very well. So I'm excited about being here. You've been good to this community. The community's been good to you, would you say? Uh, I would say it's been awesome. I mean, I, you know, I can't think of a better community. That's why I moved out here. Uh, I think it was 1978, I think. Mm. Yeah, so I love it. Love, love the Lake Orion, Orion Township.
The first Culver's restaurant opened in 1984 in Wisconsin, known for its butter burgers and frozen custard. The restaurant on M24 was the franchise's 384th location, and the brand new location on Brown Road is number 925. In 2013, Zimmer was named Business Person of the Year by the Chamber of Commerce, and the founder of Culver's, Craig Culver, traveled to Lake Orion to honor his friend. Being here today, uh, it was an honor for me. But seeing one of our people being honored in that fashion, it, it, and, and to know that you may have had just a little bit to do with it, it it's really a rewarding thing. It, it's no different than one of, our, one of our employees who may have started with us when they were 15 or 16, and today they own a franchise with us. I, I've, and we've seen so much of that. And, I, I don't know. It's just a very proud moment for me and the whole Culver, uh, the whole Culver system. It was ten years ago, and I was so honored that Craig Culver surprised me at uh, at our luncheon, and he showed up. And uh, like I like I've said before, he's a good friend of mine. He even he even called me and wished me uh, good luck with the new store. So great brand, a great person, and I'm proud to be a part of it. Culver's newest restaurant is located at 595 Brown Road in Orion Township. For more information, you can call 608-644-2604 or you can visit Culver's.com. In Orion Township, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. Over the past several years, Orion Township has taken steps to make the world a bit more accessible for those with special needs, including Miracle Field and the Let Them Play Playground at Friendship Park. Recently, one local organization hosted a fun event at the park, and the response was tremendous. On Sunday, August 13th, the AU Special Needs Foundation hosted its very first picnic at Friendship Park. Over 180 participants pre-registered, with another 30 volunteers helping out with the event. Organizers began preparing the night before, and visitors enjoyed food, entertainment, and raffles. Magician Anthony Grupito wowed the crowd with his sleight of hand tricks. This year, actually, the day that we had our egg hunt, uh, we actually have our 501c3 come through. So we are fully approved for that, and that actually opened the door for a lot more funding and resources and sponsorships. That's awesome. That's got to mean the world. Uh, it does. So this event, actually, to date, is the most expensive event we've had, and honestly, we wouldn't have been able to pull it off without the ability to have the big donors and volunteers and sponsors like we've had this year. The foundation spun off from the Down Syndrome Guild of Southeastern Michigan when founder Mary Vellucci felt the Orion Oxford area was being underserved. The Lake Orion has some of the best schools around and programs for special needs kids. Um, Lake Orion and Oxford area actually. And they don't have big charities or uh, resources outside of the schools. So that's kind of where we come in and we actually expanded it out to all of Oakland County and some of Genesee County. So we have people all the way from Novi, uh, I actually come from Farmington Hills with my son, um, all the way up to Lapeer and uh, I think even Saginaw and Mount Morris. So there, it's, it's pretty far reaching, it, it's definitely a lot bigger than we thought it would be. So we've kind of re refocused this year um, on, a, on a broader scale to see how big it actually could get now and we still need a lot of help. <laughs> Next up, the foundation is already planning to host their annual Trunk or Treat event on Saturday, October 21st. They also host an annual Easter egg hunt and have some fundraising events planned for 2024. For more information, you can visit AUSNF.org. Back on June 10th, the Orion Township Public Library kicked off their summer reading program with a huge outdoor bash. Well, the summer has gone by in the blink of an eye, and the library hosted another event to bring things to a close. On Saturday, August 5th, families returned to the library for the summer reading finale. Throughout the summer, participants of all ages were challenged to achieve specific goals and fill out a bingo card along the way for a chance to win raffle prizes. Uh, we purchased those prizes with money through a bunch of grants and also our friends of the library give us all of our funding for our programming and we purchased those prizes. Um, we did Green Hippo Gifts and Funky Monkey in Oxford, so we like to stay local with those purchases. Those in attendance were treated to a performance by magician Cameron Zavara, who travels around the world entertaining crowds with his unique brand of magic. 
That was amazing. We had a great time out here at the Orient Township Library. Magic show. Great turnout for the finale of summer. Uh, beautiful weather. A lot of people having a bunch of fun, laughing, giggling. I couldn't ask for anything better. Since it was a library event, up, when you were doing your routine, you talked a little bit about how reading may have played a role in, in your yeah. magic career. Talk about that. Sure. When I was a kid, I went to a library. There was a magician there, and it blew my mind. I knew right after that what I was going to do the rest of my life. I was going to be a magician. So I checked out a book when I was six years old. Uh, I learned how to do a few tricks out of that book. I received some magic kits for you know my birthdays and holidays, and I kind of just grew in, and I, I never grew out of it, essentially, and I became a magician, and it's, it's what I do full-time, traveling around the world. Although the summer reading program has come to an end, Youth Services has plenty of fun events planned over the next month or two. Uh, we have programs through the end of August and then we do transition to a lot more school. Um, we're going to get in the schools in the beginning of the year. Miss Carey, our school outreach librarian, will be focusing on that. And then we bring back our uh, weekly story times, which are super popular, and then night and evening programs and weekend programming too as well. For more information about upcoming programs and events, visit orionlibrary.org. The high school football season is right around the corner and the Lake Orion Dragons are once again hoping to be competitive in the OAA Red Division. Recently, Rochester High School hosted OAA Media Day and ONTV Sammy Taramina was there to talk to some of the coaches. On the afternoon of Friday, August 4th, players and coaches representing the 22 teams that make up the Oakland Activity Association gathered at Rochester High School for the 9th Annual OA Media Day. Rochester head coach Eric Vernon welcomed those in attendance and introduced the keynote speaker. High school football coach John Harrington. Harrington won 443 games and 13 state championships at Farm Hills Harrison from 1970 to 2018. He's the winningest high school football coach in Michigan history and was inducted into the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame in 2001. I'm telling you guys, they go so fast. That year goes so fast and suddenly the year is over. And you look back and say, man, I could have done more. I should have done this. I should have done that. Right now, sitting here, you got the chance to do everything you want to do. So don't take any reps off. One last saying that I like, as the season goes on, when you win, you're never as good as you think you are. And when you lose, you're never as bad as you think you are. So you just go and work hard for the next game. Have a great season. Enjoy playing the greatest game ever invented. Thank you. Following Coach Harrington's inspirational message, representatives of all 22 teams that make up the OA were invited to come up and address the media. The OA is made up of four divisions, the red, white, blue, and gold. The Lake Orion Dragons share the red division with Clarkston, West Bloomfield, Rochester Adams, Oxford, and Stony Creek. Following the press conference, I had a chance to talk to some of the coaches about the upcoming 2023 season. All right, here we got Lake Orion, assistant coach John Blacksock here. Coach, um, obviously, you know, you look at Lake Orion, who was loaded this year um, on both sides of the ball. So talk about that here for a minute. Yeah, you know, we're really excited. We've got a lot of, a lot of guys back that uh, have been through the battles the last two to three years. Uh, we're excited about the young guys that are coming up, some of the freshmen from last year and sophomores that will be with the varsity. And, you know, we, we hope that the scoreboard works out on our end more times than it doesn't. But uh, as coaches, we're just really excited because it's such a fun group of kids to be around. They've got great energy. They've got great attitudes and their work ethic has been outstanding. Talk about your defense and special teams. That's been one question mark. A lot of people look at with Lake Orion. How is that going to look? Yeah, you know, I think you'll see some new faces. Um, but we're excited about it. You know, I think we're going to run really well on, on that side of the ball this year. Defensively and special teams, you know, we'll, we'll move well and we're going to try to keep things pretty fundamental and pretty basic so that the kids can just play fast. What is the expectation this year, Coach? Uh, expectation doesn't change. You know, it's, it's always the same to win the OAA Red. That's number one goal, number one expectation, and then to uh, see how much we can improve each week and become the best team that we possibly can. I got the coach of the Cats, Coach Jack Line here. Coach, um, we talked on the podcast recently. Yep. Um, how's everything been for you? Everything's been good. You know, we, we've had a good offseason. Um, we are further ahead than we were last year. You know, we, we were back to ground zero this year uh, and able to build um, towards our team and towards football more. Um, you know, last year we spent a lot of time as a staff and as a group making sure we were all in a good spot mentally, um, getting guys 
there and present, um, you know, because it was a hard year last year. So this year we were able to start from ground zero and just start building. Talk about it, Luke. Obviously, you know, we talked last week on the pod about Luke. Um, how has he been doing? You know, Luke's been uh, out wrestling in Fargo, so he spent most of July training. Um, Luke will be back now for all of August. We had him June, we'll have him August. Um, but Luke's a stud, right? He, he's going to go out there, he's going to work hard. Um, he's just got an effort level that it's hard to match. What is the expectation this year, Coach? I like this team. Like I said on the podcast, I'm only looking at week one, and I like our matchup against Eisenhower. Um, this is a group that will just keep getting better over and over and over again every week, every rep. So, um, I, you know, to me, it's just, as far as this team will take us, um, I like our odds. I got the coach of Clarkson Wolves, Justin Pintar, here. Coach, um, last season you made the um, Division um, One state semifinals. Um, how, is, how has the offseason been for you guys? Uh, we've had a really good off season. You know, we try to take advantage of the the days that the MHSA gives us, and I, I think we're way ahead of where we were last year at this time. Um, you know, the coaches have put a lot of time in. Players are more comfortable this year having the same staff um, back for year two. So I, I think from last year to this year, we're we're definitely ahead of where we were at this time last year. Talk about your quarterback and running back situation. How's that been going for you guys? Um, quarterback position, we got we got a few different kids that have been battling um, throughout the summer. Um, all of them have, have looked really good at times, and, and we're going to continue that kind of uh, that quarterback battle into camp. So we don't know right now who's going to be our, our starting quarterback at the big house, um, but we feel comfortable with all of the guys that we have right now that are competing for that spot. Um, running back is a little bit of a um, – a little bit more sure there. We got uh, Lucas and Griffin Bowman who are going to get some reps there. Um, Ryan Rector played some there last year, and, and he'll be in the mix a little bit. So we feel pretty confident in uh, in all three of those guys running the football for us. So um, quarterback's the one spot where we just got to see where we're at in a couple weeks. What is your expectation this year? Um, you know, I think at Clarkston the expectations are always to you know compete for a league, um, win districts, win regionals. I mean that that's kind of the bar that it was set by uh, you know Coach Richardson over the last several decades. So um, th that's where we always have our expectations. You know, and, and we know that it's not easy to do that because this league is one of the best in the state. Um, and obviously the teams that we'll see in the playoffs um, are very good as well. But th those are always our expectations going into the season. I got the coach of the Lake Show, Coach yeah. Jack Hilbers here. Coach, um, obviously we were on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, so talk about the Lakers. Um, talk about what you expect with the Lakers this season. Well, you know what? I just I just expect us to go out there and compete. Like uh, if we set it up there, as, as did a lot of other people, the league is so deep, it's so challenging. The level of coaching is is so high that uh, you know if we know if we go out there and compete and get a chance to to play in Week Ten and beyond, that we're going to be ready for whatever's out there. Talk about your um, talk about your schedule. It is brutal. You got three home games. You'll be wearing the um, the white uniforms a lot this year. So talk about your schedule. It is brutal. Yeah, it's brutal. I mean, the OAA red I think speaks for itself and stands on its own as being probably like the most competitive and the deepest league there is in the state. And then if you look at our crossovers, you know, you're playing Southfield, who's just loaded, unbelievably talented. Uh, Birmingham Groves, who was in the Final Four last year and has you know a couple really good players. And then the other games are Oak Park and Chippewa Valley with established coaches that have won and really good players too. So if you look at it like, a, like that, it's like. As a total, you're like, oh my gosh, how are we going to do this? So we're going to take it week by week and just try to get better each week. What is your expectation this year, Coach? I mean, we have team goals for ourselves, right? And, you know, they might be they might be lofty, but we also believe that if, you know, you focus too much on the goals and your expectations, that you're going to miss the things that it takes along the way to get there. So right now, our expectation is to be ready to play August 24th, week one. And, you know, if we are and we keep getting better and fixing our mistakes, we think we can be in a good spot. But... You know, we're just not just going to have some lofty, you know, high hopes and just hope it gets there. I got Coach of Fear the Veer, Tony Vitrino here. Um, Coach, um, last season, a lot of experience. Um, how's everything been this year, this off season? We're clearly much younger. We got we only have two starters back on D, and you know, Parker's gone, and his brother's gone, and a lot of our leadership left. And but they created a standard of work ethic, and you know, we heard a lot of the coaches talk about today. Our young guys are going to grind, and you know, Brady's and and Mags are going to lead us, and we're going to try to compete. How about your quarterback situation? How that's been going? Well, we got three guys that are really working hard to fight for the job, and I probably don't think our staff will be have a clear understanding of who that's going to be until after the scrimmage. So we got three good dudes: Tommy Offer, uh, Rhino Waters, and Lachlan Tillerson that are all playing pretty well. 
hopefully one of them emerges and makes it easy for us. How's your schedule looking? It's crazy hard. Um, you know, we're starting with St. Mary's and they're going to be much better this year away. And then the OA Red and we cross over with Rochester and Bloomy. So there's no easy weeks and we're excited. We're just trying to focus for St. Mary's right now. What are the expectations here, coach? Man, try to get better week one to week nine because uh, if we don't, it's going to be a long year. The Dragons open up the 2023 season at Michigan against Livonia Stevenson. Kickoff is set for noon. The Dragons won't be home until September the 8th, which is week three, as they take on Oxford at Dragon Stadium. From Rochester, I'm Sammy Termina, ON TV News. Thanks, Sammy. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ON TV News. On behalf of the hardworking ON TV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.